Hello, hello, everyone. We are about to start a mission spotlight over here at the Redwire booth. My name is Camille Bergen, otherwise known as the Galactic Gal. I'm a science communicator, space content creator, and I've been working with Redwire all week to share the stage, hand the stage over to these wonderful people. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Jake Moulton, who is the business development manager at VAST. And oh, sorry, oh my gosh, Redwire. <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, you are going to talk about crossbow systems. OK, or is it on? Testing. There we go. Yeah, thanks, Camille. Um, and Max, welcome. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, Jake. Right? Thanks um, for asking. Let's start. I'd Test. like you to introduce yourself, kind of tell us a little bit about your background, how you ended up at Crossbow. Sure. Uh, I am Max Vosloff. I'm Chief Technical Officer for Crossbow Systems. Uh, well, I'm a recovering engineer, communications engineer. I worked. Uh, in uh, commercial comms for a long time. I went to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for about six years. Then I joined a little unknown, unheard of company called SpaceX when they had 100 or so people. Uh, and there I did several things, but the main thing was I managed the development of the Dragon spacecraft from, uh, from initial sketches on a whiteboard with Elon to uh, the launch pad. So uh, from there, I consulted with a lot of technology companies and with investors. I worked for Paul Allen for a few years. I've worked uh, in finance, which I did not enjoy so much. And last five years, I've been at Crossbow. Uh, I've known uh, Jason Huntley, my boss, the CEO, I've known for over 15 years in, with various hats on. So um, yeah, so five years now at Crossbow. Awesome. Um, and so, yeah, t please tell us a little bit about Crossbow. There's been uh, a lot, certainly over the last 12 months, um, a lot of exciting pieces of news. Um, if you can tell us about Crossbow, um, what the last 12 months in particular have been like. Sure. Uh, yeah, so Crossbow is about 150 people now. And uh, yeah, that's double what we were 12 months ago. Um, we have offices in Albuquerque, in Texas, in Luling, in Huntsville, in Northern California. Um, we have R&D facilities in uh, Socorro, which is just south of Albuquerque, and we are building a campus of uh, production capability for solid rocket motors in Texas. Um, and yeah, the, the last 12 months, and I had to write this down because, I say, we've, we've doubled in size, but we've also had a second fully successful launch of one of our large 34-inch motors out of White Sands missile range with Redwire's help. Uh, with all the structures. We have won and executed the first few milestones successfully of the conventional prompt strike long range hypersonic weapon contract. Uh, we're supplying both first, first and second stage motors uh, under that contract. Uh, we have won and, be and begun execution of uh, an AFRL contract called REARM that will be outfitting our production facility in Texas. Coupled with that, there was a Stratfy award that doubles that uh, initial award. Uh, we have, I can now announce that we have been awarded the SM6 Mark 72 and Mark 104 motor developments. Uh, that will be kicking off very shortly. Uh, what else is in here? We now have multiple buildings on our campus in Texas. Last year we only had one, now we have four and uh, two test pads operating regularly. Uh, we have a support contract with Naval Surface Warfare Center in Indian Head to redesign, refurbish their production facilities. Uh, three buildings are on contract and there's multiple more coming. And this week we got our AS9100 certification. Oh, very exciting. Which is not so exciting, but it's very important. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's kind of crossbow in a nutshell. Yeah, well congrats on the new awards, the new contracts. And I don't want to overlook, you know, two successful launches and two attempts, so two for two, um, which right. uh, is very impressive. Um, and a new launch that I think we'll talk about um, here in a couple months, um, mm -hmm. a little bit later. Um, so, you know, I know Crossbow's you know, primary mission is this novel rocket motor technology that you guys have, and um, was hoping maybe with the mock-ups that you brought that you could tell us a little bit about this technology, um, what makes it so innovative, and um, you know why you're going down this route. Yeah, so I guess we call it our modular motors, and um, the whole—it's really an architecture more than a particular size or a particular motor. Um, they're man manufactured in cartridges, and it's—it's it's very much like Lego. You, 
you design and build pieces, and those pieces can be assembled not just into one motor or two motors, you can assemble it into a very large number of different types and sizes of motors. Um, the one we've flown twice is actually similar to the one on the end here. That is a one-tenth scale. So that's 3.4 inches. The one we've flown is about 34 inches in diameter. The next one we'll be flying, actually the next one after the next one that we'll be flying is more like this one. This, this vehicle, which is actually the motor in that vehicle, uh, we call XL3 or Bolt 3. Um, that will push a 500 pound payload to Mark 5 and 500,000 feet as a very simple single stage vehicle. But the modularity of these motors means that we're not just bringing one or two motors to market. We're bringing an entire family of motors, literally hundreds of possibilities, tailorable possibilities, tailorable motors using um, common parts. So it's a, it's a mix and match, it's a Build-A-Bear motor. And uh, that just allows us to accommodate a, a huge range of different needs in any given family, meaning any given diameter. And then more families, especially in line with the uh, new contracts that we have, there'll be new families. And some of them will be in the small tactical scale, some of them will be in the 21 inch scale. And we are also looking at larger than 34 inch, significantly larger than 34 inch. So as we bring these online, we can test them initially with a single cartridge, it's a relatively small version. And then as we add cartridges, you get into first stage and some very large boosters. So uh, it's kind of a different paradigm for solid rocket motor, um, for ordering solid rocket motors. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, it screams modularity. Um, and the different sizes um, are interesting as well. I did want to uh, maybe touch on that a little bit more um, and talk specifically about the kind of different markets that you guys are addressing with the rocket motor technology. Um, you mentioned the new kind of campus that you're standing mm -hmm. up in the Austin area that, I mean, looks like you guys are gearing up for production level orders. So wanted to have you talk a little bit about that and um, the markets that you're addressing. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, Crossbow's vision is to address the well-known, uh, widely discussed deficiencies in the solid rocket motor supply chain to the defense industrial base. Um, you know, 40 years of consolidation has led us to where we are now with two suppliers, um, one of which has less than a quarter of the market. So we are determined. We are, um, our vision is to step in and be the first new supplier of solid rocket motors, credible supplier, in over 30 years. And so that's a wide range of applications because solid motors are ubiquitous in defense. Everything from a shoulder-fired missile to a, to a, a strategic missile in a, a Minuteman or, or a um, Trident are all solids. And so we can address all those markets in, and, and launch. They strap, you can get to space using these motors if, they're, if it's a big enough vehicle. But we are actively pursuing everything from small tactical motors in the few inch size up to well above 34 inch diameter. And so our customers currently are all defense and Department of Energy. Uh, and then I should mention as well that in markets, besides the motors, we're also launching our motors as part of our collaboration with Redwire and our partners at Los Alamos. Um, we are building vehicles. Each time we field a new motor, we put fins and nose cone on it and we launch it to prove that it works in flight. And we have customers who want to fly payloads on those. And in doing so, we're really a system integrator, a launch system integrator and a launch service provider. We're not so much focused on going to orbit. We made a decision years ago not to play in that very crowded field of small launch. But the larger vehicles that we are planning will be orbit capable if there were a market for that. Awesome. Um, and I did want to talk a little bit more about um, you know, the development process and kind of where you guys are at with that now. Um, with the two successful launches that we've had, um, with you know, the suborbital launch vehicle that's um, a little bit smaller than this. This is XL3, but XL2A and XL2B um, over the last two summers you know, have um, proven uh, different aspects of your guys' motor technology. And, um, wanted you to talk a little bit about um, the differences between those two launches and um, kind of where where you guys are at in the development process with these test flights so far. Yeah, so the 
the first launch, actually really, really the first two launches of XL2, and when you say smaller than that, that's about a tenth size. <laughs> so it's a little shorter than that in aspect ratio, but um, it's much bigger than that model. Um, the XL2 vehicles were really the first flight test of our large modular motor technology. So it was to prove that we could assemble this motor, we could design, build, assemble, and launch this motor, and in the vehicle itself. And we had excellent support from Redwire's Load Path Group in Albuquerque in designing really all of the vehicle structures uh, apart from the motor itself. And so they were key to us successfully executing those missions. Um, it was also a very tactical timeline. We showed up with all the parts at the launch site nine days before launch. In that time, we assembled the motor, we assembled the payload, we assembled the vehicle, we uploaded it, we did all the checks, and we launched it. And that old timeline will get shorter going forward as well. And so the first time uh, was very successful, especially from the vehicle perspective. Um, the second one, the customer changed their payload a little bit, and we recovered the payload from the second one. And then the next one will be the same vehicle and the same motor, but it'll be a propellant grain that we've used our advanced manufacturing technology to create. So that'll be the same, but it proves a different piece of our strategy, which is advanced manufacturing of propellant. And then after that, we get into larger vehicles with a larger motor. That's what we call Bolt 3. That should be early 2025. Yeah, and you talked a little bit about kind of the speed to launch from, you know, getting on the launch site within, you know, building everything up, ready to launch in nine days. Um, and that's kind of a perfect segue into uh, tactically responsive launch, tactically responsive space. I, I love your perception on this. There's a, there's a lot of talk lately about TACRL, TACRS, mm -hmm. um, you know, with your guys' modular rocket motor technology with red wires suborbital launch vehicle structure, we have a very compelling solution um, for TAC-RL, TAC-RS. Um, wanted to, you to talk a little bit about that and um, your perspective on TAC-RL, TAC-RS, um, and how our team you know, fits into that paradigm. Yeah, so responsive launch means different things to different people. And to traditional launch providers like SpaceX or ULA, it can mean shortening the FAA approval timeline from 12 months to six months. I mean, that's a big improvement. Uh, that's not really the game that we would play in. I think of it more as an operational, operational tactical launch. So rather than six months, because if we lose a key asset on day one of a shooting war, six months is kind of too long. Tactical launch really is more like a tactical system in that it's something that could, for example, put things into orbit every six hours for two weeks, maybe from a different location every time. If we get to that sort of need, then this is the architecture, the gold standard architecture. It's something that you can assemble quickly, launch quickly with very minimal infrastructure on the ground, and it's something that you can have on a hot standby 20 minutes from launch for days, weeks, sitting there ready to launch if and when you're ready to launch it. Um, and so if we get serious as a nation about having that capability, we're in, because this is, this is the standard. Yep, thank you. Um, and in addition to responsive launch, I also wanted to talk about hypersonics. Um, and maybe you can talk a little bit about um, Crossbow's vision you know, with the Crossbow Redwire team um, in the hypersonics realm. Sure, and we are on the Mark TB contract, which is sort of the test clearinghouse for the Army and Navy in developing and testing hypersonic systems. Um, and so, and we are actually the only supplier of solid rocket motors on that team. Kratos is on the team, but they're getting their uh, motors from Aerojet or Northrop Grumman. So we're the only ones designing and building motors on that team. Um, certainly our customers, currently our customers for launch, are all either Defense or Department of Energy, and they're all either on ballistic trajectories, meaning they're testing re-entry vehicles or technologies, or hypersonic, depressed trajectories, testing hypersonics, or you know, all the associated things that need to be tested and developed. And so that is very much, that is a major application of especially our modular motors, because 
The thing about modularity is it allows you this great flexibility in test. Now, it may not be fine-tuned quite as much as a custom bespoke design for a particular purpose, particular um, program of record, for example. And if, we, if our customer needs prog uh, program of record motor designs, bespoke designs, that's what we are doing for CPS. That's what we're doing for Mark 72 and 104. But for the test regimen especially, the flexibility that this modular architecture brings is incredibly powerful to be able to tweak a trajectory or be able to tweak or adjust to payload changes, payload mass changes, even weeks, even days before launch simply by adjusting how you assemble the motor and some of the processes that you perform when you assemble the motor. So um, the modular motor architecture is ex particularly well suited to development testing, including the big effort right now in hypersonics. Yeah, absolutely. Flexibility, modularity, that's what you guys are um, going for with the rocket motor. Um, that, that same theme you know, we're going after with the, the launch vehicle structure. Um, final question for this mission spotlight, uh, what's next? Uh, what are you guys looking at over the next 12 months? Well, um, we should do this again in 12 months and compare what I say now to, to my last 12 months list. Um, so we have a, a, a launch of the uh, what we call CM1, so it's a, a repeat mission using our motor for our DIU customer. We will also be in the next 12 months launching Bolt 3. Um, we will be continuing to execute on the contracts that I've mentioned, as well as multiple developments and static tests, probably not flight tests, but multiple development tests of tactical scale motors. And we will have initial production capability at our facilities in Texas. So that's, that's a huge deal because that facility when we have all three manufacturing buildings online. One should be online this year. Uh, but that'll be three million pounds of propellant uh, per year, which is a, a not insignificant contribution to national capacity. Uh, not to mention all of the testing and all of the integration and the NDT and the, everything else that we're putting in place there as part of a manufacturing campus. So yeah, I expect to have, uh, actually we have four buildings under construction right now and there'll be at least two or three more starting before the end of this year. So the construction site is coming online progressively in phases and that will begin before the end of this year. Yeah, it's been a very exciting last 12 months and uh, you know we look forward to an even more exciting next 12 months and appreciate the partnership and the collaboration and look Absolutely. forward to where Absolutely, let me, let me add that we really appreciate the relationship with Redwire. Our load path has been an invaluable partner to us in standing up these vehicles. And these vehicles are only going to get bigger and more sophisticated, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Awesome. Likewise. Thanks, Max. Thank you. We'll turn it back over to Camille. Thank you guys so much. That was incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and for everyone else attending. Our next event is the most anticipated event of the week. I'm not kidding. Uh, Star Wars versus Star Trek. We're debating it here at 3.30, and we also have a happy hour, so grab a beer, hang out with us, and enjoy this last panel of the day. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Max. Good job. Thank you. Great job, y'all. Great job. <laughs>